All right, so I'm torn. I can't lie, family. I'm a little bit torn. I'm absolutely torn with whether or not I think this is a good idea. But let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I know that there's a lot of people that's going to say, man, this is dope. This is awesome. This is big. We need to support it. So on and so forth. You know, all of that. Right. I know it's a lot of people that's rocking in that space. But then again, we also have to take into consideration every other factor, because often at times we get blindsided by what is being sold as the benefits or how it is that we feel about a specific industry. And we don't take into account what goes on on the other side of that coin and that equation. Now, me trying to be as objective as possible, shout out to the Thanos mug, me trying to be as objective as possible, I'm trying to be open-minded to what the possibilities are considering. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Could it be profitable? Could it be a great business idea? I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever. It sounds like a very smart business move from a financial perspective. But on the flip side of the equation in the coin, I'm always looking at it from a moral and ethic perspective. Hear me out. Hear me out. Because you already know that Anton stands on the idea that all money is not good money. Shout out to all of the Super Chats, too. I started rocking with for about a month. I just subscribed to your Patreon. Thanks, family. I appreciate it. I'm not. I'm not the type of person that actually advocates for this thing because I'll give you a similar example. Not the same, not even close with regard to the industry. But I'll give you a similar example. I believe in my heart of hearts that the casinos in downtown Detroit was one of the worst things that could have ever happened to the city. Now, you will have people on the flip side of that coin and equation, and they'll say stuff like, but look at how many jobs it has and the tax revenue that goes into the city and so on and so forth and blah, 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 blah. But I'm telling you as a person that has researched every aspect of how this casino industry continues to decimate and destroy families, lives and households on a regular basis. How much bad are you willing to endure through in order to justify what you deem as good? Are we having a conversation authentically on both sides of the equation? In order to truly be able to make an informed decision. I'm serious. Think about it. Listen, you talking to a guy that very much has been embedded into the gambling industry significantly, significantly. I still like to gamble, right? I can afford to. The amount of money that I spend in the casino is very, very insignificant to the amount of revenue that I generate. Facts. As a matter of fact, I spend less now than I did 15, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. I used to go in a casino with $30,000, dollars $40,000. Now, I may throw on the table five or 10 grand just to have a good time, depending on who it is that I'm entertaining and me going down and taking them to the restaurant, so on and so forth. But I wanted to I wanted to explore exactly what it did to family. So what I did was I started having conversations with people that were on the other side of that fence that said that I can't stop. I've lost my businesses. I've lost my house. I've lost my family as a result of being immersed in this world. And it's going to take me out. And, I, and I've already made up in my mind that I'm never going to stop. It's just over for me. I did a video. See, this is why I may want to have these conversations. I did a video. I did a video on my channel of what it's like to go to Gamblers Anonymous. I shared that content with you guys. I've talked to people that have went to jail 
went on a downward spiral. See, it wasn't just the gambling. It was a gateway to other things that they would have not necessarily been exposed to had they never went into that lifestyle. In addition to that, in addition to that, it does not necessarily help the city. People are not coming to a lot of these cities that have these gambling facilities and spending a lot of tourism dollars. They do it in Vegas. They do it in Macau. They're not doing it in Atlantic City. They're not doing it in Detroit. They're not doing it in Springfield. They're not doing it in Biloxi, Mississippi. It's the truth. And so what you find is that the majority of the people that continue to spend their money in these facilities are of the local economy. Walk into any casino early in the morning. Go in at 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. You know who I see? Seniors spending their, their pensions, their social security benefits, all of that. They're in there. They will bust them down there. They busting them down there, draining them, and they'll drive them back. I'm telling you the truth. So now that we have the additional context, I'm not telling you that it's not fun. Why do you think that they put up their the gambling hotline and all of that, all of that is regulated because they understand. You know how many people try to ban themselves with, from casinos? Real talk. Real talk. I'm telling you the truth. So is it fun? Does it bring in tourism dollars? Does it add jobs? Yeah, sure. Of course. There are benefits. Of course there's benefits. Me being objective says that. See, see, see. You can't blame the casino business for lack of responsibility. This is the short term thinking or the short mindset that a lot of people have. And I can tell that they've never been in any form of leadership because that's the first thing you do is take into consideration the way in which you impacting people that don't even know what they're getting into. The first time that I went to the casino, I was 19 years old. You can't even do it here in Michigan or in the United States. So we went over to Canada because in Detroit, you can just drive right over to Windsor. I've seen it happen a million times. You got some kid that just went in there to celebrate for their birthday. They threw $20 down on a roulette table. They hit for 30 times for whatever it is that they threw down on their first time and they get hooked. They get hooked. You don't even truly understand what it does to your brain when you win the first time that you walk into a casino. I'm telling you the truth, fam. So you short-sighted when you don't understand what responsibility you take. And that's why they say with great power comes great responsibility. What you think? Casinos is built off winners? Anyways, anyways, I digress. I use that example in order to illustrate something else when it comes to this $175 million compound that's being built in Detroit, right? I'm from the hood. Most of us are. I still know a lot of people that's engulfed, can't for the life of them be able to kick this habit, lips turning black. Half the time they walking through the, through the world like zombies can't even exist without smoking before they wake up and then after they go to, before they go to bed. After they wake up and then before they go to bed. What? Listen, listen. Here's the way that I, tr I tend to look at it. Here's the way that I tend to look at it. I would not want this facility being built near my house or in my neighborhood. A lot of the people that participate, and again, I'm open to the possibility that I may be short-sighted, right? I may be looking at this and not being open enough to be able to take into consideration. Shout out to all of the super chats. I'm looking at this from the, pers per from the perspective in that I'm open to somebody giving me some game and some insight on how it is that I may need to look at this differently so that I can make more informed decisions and maybe I'm off. Maybe it will be more beneficial than not. But as of right now, I can't see it. 
I can't see it. You can't get me to sell something to somebody that I know will possibly negatively affect them just for the sake of adding jobs or generating revenue or tax revenue for the city that I'm doing the business in. I always lean back to what I want my daughter to do it, what I want this type of facility to be in my neighborhood. And if no, then why would I want to advocate for it in somebody else's neighborhood? And again, I'm torn. I'm torn because I don't know enough about the effects of the cannabis industry and how it is because it's not just about money, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just about money. It's how we go about doing the things that we do in order to generate the revenue that we have. I don't want to get rich the wrong way. I don't want to keep making money the wrong way. I have to add value to people's lives, not take away from it. It's we got enough of people taking away from it. But again, I'm open to the fact that I need to be able to make more informed decisions, maybe based off of some stuff that I don't know. And the reality of it is that, and I'm about to, I'm going to open up the link. I'm going to drop the link in the chat. Maybe y'all can give me some insight that I may not know. The reality of it is that, there has been people that I have tried to get jobs, recommend them. And you know what they did? They made me look bad. They made me look bad because they were unable, even with enough warning and enough lead time for them to be able to get themselves clean. They were unable to secure these quarter million dollar jobs all because they could not stop smoking trees. They could not stop smoking trees. At what cost do we continue to do the things that may not necessarily be on the up and up just so we can make more profit? Why do we, cons why do we compare ourselves to people of old that did it the wrong way in order to try to justify the, the gains or the means by which we go about doing things? I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I'm torn. I'm not advocating against it. I'm not advocating for it because I don't know enough information for me to be able to make that type of decision or to recommend to you guys. So I'm going to defer to learning more about it. Let me drop this link in the chat so that I can get some more information from y'all. Because honestly, honestly, my, my initial instincts is that no. No. The instinct is to say, nah, nah. Not a good idea. If I wouldn't want it in my own neighborhood, if I wouldn't want my own people doing it, if I wouldn't want all of my employees embracing this whole lifestyle and things like that, then why would I recommend it for other people? Why would I recommend it for other people?